outside and I hope all of you are having a great time here. Today is a very special day for me. This place has seen me grow up. This place has seen me grow out of my prejudices, my superstitions, my reservations and it has seen me become what I am today. As I get to share the stage with such renowned and accomplished women and men, I feel nothing less than exhilarated. So when I was told that I had the opportunity to be a part of this TEDx event being organized here at GMC Jammu, it was a real struggle for me to decide what I was going to talk about. Having spent most of my waking hours over the past few years in the hospital, I tend to take most of my life lessons from the hospital itself, from my patients, from fellow medical professionals, from situations at the hospital, from life and death. Most doctors present here in the audience would agree that residing in the hospital, either by virtue of your illness or by virtue of your employment, residency is not a very pleasant experience. Anyone who has visited a busy hospital day on a regular working day would definitely appreciate the difficulty that it is to procure an empty bed for their patients in the hospital. The struggle to get an empty bed is for real. Let us see why though. The 1946 Bohr Committee report recommends that there be one bed per thousand population per district. The National Health Policy in 2017 recommends that there be two beds per thousand population per district. Consequently, it has been put out there that there be one bed per thousand population as the essential norm and two beds per thousand population per district as the desirable target. Here, I'd like to take a pause and point out that most doctors like me are not really great at mathematics. So I would like to scroll down to this table from the same document, a few pages down the text that says that for a population of less than 2 lakhs, 50 beds are the essential number and 100 beds are the desirable number. A quick calculation there would tell you that this equals 0.5 beds per thousand population as the essential norm and one bed per thousand population as the desired target. What does that tell you? This tells you that the Indian healthcare system is functioning at exactly 50% of the total number of beds that have been recommended as per the population statistics. No wonder it is a task to find an empty bed in the hospital. It is in fact the trolley problem day in and day out for all of us. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the conundrum, the trolley problem was first described in the year 1967 by this philosopher Philippa Foote, particularly against the background of medical ethics. This is a trolley or a train that is destined to cross these five people on its usual course of track. However, interestingly, there is an alternative. If somebody pulls this lever, the train would divert its track and cross this one person instead, sparing the rest of the others. And alternatively, if there is a bridge, you have the option of pushing down this fat person over the bridge so that this person collides with the train instead and these five people are spared. Now, if you were in the driver's seat, if you had the option of either pulling this lever or pushing or shoving this fat person off the bridge and killing, not killing these five people, would you do it? Well, if you're a doctor or a healthcare professional who has worked in a hospital, you have been pulling the lever over and over and over again, just like Sisyphus. You have internalized pulling the lever. You have learned it at your spinal lever. You have internalized it. I believe one of the reasons that uh, today's theme is beyond medicine is to highlight the fact that us doctors are not just a bunch of mechanical geeky individuals with mundane routines. I mean, it's not that we do not give all of everyone else and the rest of the world enough opportunity to believe that. Here is this ode to Korot Kov. It seems quite paternalistic not to discuss sprint trial statistics so that patients can make their own choice since below 130 is usually fine. For shared decisions, please make enough time to give all hypertensives a voice. This is from the heart, the journal, mind you, from this international journal, anyway. Coming back, being a doctor is not just about academics and hard work. 
It is about dealing with the bare human spirit day in and day out. Because in the hospital, the patients are completely uninhibited mentally, physically, emotionally. The hospital is a boiling pot of emotions, grief and glee, reward and frustration, hope and despair. You keep switching between these emotions back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, over and over again, patients and residents alike. And then there is this perpetual sense of helplessness and anger. There is only so much that a person can take. You want more proof regarding that? As per this study, healthcare professionals, the risk of suicide amongst doctors is considered 2.5 times higher than the general population. Some studies even point out that the risk is between 5 to 7 times. We here at GMC Jammu are still reeling from the loss of our dear colleague to depression and suicide. We would assume that we are taking adequate steps to address the situation. We are doing enough to reach out to our colleagues, friends and family to address this issue and make healthcare, mental care available for everyone. Sadly, the same document later points out that there is a staggering 80% gap between mental between healthcare professionals trying to seek mental health and those mental health care and those who are actually getting it. What can we do about it? What must we do about it? We must all come together and support and watch out for signs of burnout amongst our friends, family and colleagues. We must voice out what is wrong with the existing work culture and detoxify the workplace and make it a more pleasant experience for residents who spend most of their residency within the closed walls of a hospital. At the workplace, in the department, we must support each other. We must make changes in our routine working activities and stop doing redundant, repetitive work just for the sake of formalities. We must all come together and advocate for more resources, human and otherwise, so that this suicide rate, this sad situation of the country's doctors today is put to an end. In the end, I would only like to conclude with the observation that was made by Frederick Nietzsche about a hundred years ago, that all of us are barely human, human all too human. It is only the substance of the human spirit that is extraordinary and indomitable. Everything else is just ephemeral, always, always in transit. Thank you.